literally just by managing only on the one minute, we were able to extend this trade from a one to three all the way up to a one to 15.49 risk to reward. That simple without any more work as far as, you know, seeing how far this is going to come back against us, etc. Welcome back to the channel guys. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down how I personally manage my trades using order blocks. Now this truly works on any time frame, but I focus mostly on the lower time frames because of the fact that I like to enter off the one minute time frame. So what I'm going to do is show you guys a couple examples of once you take an entry, how to manage your trade to get the most out of it. And also, you know, how you can just view price a little bit clearer by using this strategy. Now let's just take this price action over here. You can see I'm on EURUSD on the H1 timeframe. So we had a huge run up around London session and let's break down, for example, if you were to catch a position from here or even from here for this little cell here, how you can manage your position to know how long to hold and when to actually get out. So let's go ahead and break down how you could have actually caught this entry first. Now looking at this price action, we can see that our last two candlestick pullback was here. So if we drew a line across, that will be our break of structure because this high was taken out by this wick, which means we made a new higher high. All right, so I'm just gonna mark this BOS. And from that point, I'm only looking for buy trades. Now, when we look to the left of this price action, we can also see above us, we have this range of price that needs to be filled in. Okay, so I'm just gonna do it across like that. And then not only that, but we also have an actual bearish order block sitting above it here. All right, cool. So now when we're looking at this level, we understand that once we push above here, we want to see a reaction with this bearish order block. And as we can see, since we're technically still in a uptrend, we are not looking for price to crash back all the way to a new impulse low, but we're looking for price to overall maintain new higher low points. So as we can see, price continues the ascending pattern upwards. Now, if we check the H4 time frame, of course, it'll consolidate more candles and we can see that we actually formed a bullish order block here that got retested again for another bullish order block, which then gave us a level of demand that pushed up. Okay, now remember, you can always draw a fib on your order block, for example, like this, and you can get around the 50% for where you wanna see price retest into it, which we get perfectly right here. Now, let's drop down to a lower time frame to see how we could have entered this price action. So one more thing I wanna mention really quickly is that we actually had Asian sessions low right here, okay? So this was Asian sessions low, and as we can see, London session came back to retest it. So if we just dropped a zone from this area here, and then we go down to a lower time frame, what we can see is that this turns into levels of demand, right? So all I'm gonna do is find a time frame that I can fine tune this order block to. All right, so now we can see that we actually had a consolidation range of demand basically, um, but we did have bullish order block sitting here. Now we can also see under us, we didn't have any missing price or anything like that. We did have missing price above this order block though. So that is the reason that price was driven back to this point. Now, if we come back over here, what we can see is that we get that interaction. If we drop to the one minute now, we can see that we actually got a left head and right shoulder but we also had a bullish engulfing pattern here. So when it takes two green candles to engulf a bearish candle, that's actually a bullish engulfing variation slash order block variation, okay? So now if we switch up to a higher time frame, this should turn into an order block. All right, so we have a bearish bullish pattern here, and let's see what we get on the three minute. 
So as you guys can see, this price action was a bit choppy here. It didn't really give us the bullish engulfing pattern, but we did get several different variations of order blocks. So once again, let's say that we actually caught a trade from this level, and now we're trying to figure out how do we actually manage this trade? Where should we get out, etc. Now, if you guys can remember, we had missing price in this area and price simply exploded through it. So when price does this, I'm not automatically panicking, thinking the market's gonna come against me, et cetera, but I have to look at this logically and ask myself, what does price want to do next, okay? So for an example, we have a low to a high. From that point, I understand that price took out so many levels of liquidity, so many previous highs, that we expect a retracement to happen. So what I'm gonna wait for now is to see, does price give me two consecutive bearish candles? Okay, if we get two consecutive bearish candles, I know that from that point, we can see a new high be created and that will be our new higher low point. I'm also looking for wicks, okay? So as you can see in this area, we get a long wick on this bearish candle to the bottom. So price did not even break past this, okay? We stayed within the range of this bearish candle, which is a good sign as far as us holding this trade for another bullish push. Now, after we actually, you know, start to reverse from here, I'm going to be looking for bullish order blocks and I'm going to be looking for quasis. Okay, so as you can see here, this bearish bullish pattern actually gave us a shoulder, this bearish bullish pattern gave us a head, and this bearish bullish pattern gave us a right shoulder. We also had some exhaustion on that right shoulder showing us where price wanted to go next. Okay, so the way I kind of view the market when I'm in a buy position is I'm ignoring the liquidity to the top side, if that makes sense. So long wicks to the top side aren't scaring me out of the trade because I simply know that overall price needs to form new levels of liquidity to be ran. Okay. So remember if you're trading in a particular direction, for example, if I'm trading upwards and I'm seeing wicks to the top side form, I have to understand that that's the flow of the market. That is how we create new liquidity and new places for people to place their stop loss above before they get rated. Okay, so nonetheless, this wick high, this wick high, this wick high right here, all these are places that people are setting the stop losses for the shorts they're taking within this area. Now, with that being said, price then has a strong impulse up. And once this bullish candle closes, I have to understand logically that this area is all a breakout range, which means that price can come all the way back down to this previous wick to fill in. Okay, so I cannot panic by the fact that, you know, I see price starting to retrace. I have to be comfortable with the fact that price can literally come all the way back to this point here. Now, something else we want to keep in mind is once we break past this bearish candle high here, we also form a order block for a higher time frame. Okay, so if we highlighted this area here and drug it across, what we can see is that this will actually turn into a base candle on another time frame. Okay, so when you see a retracement and then a impulse that takes out the previous levels, that is going to form an order block for us. So now, as price explodes upwards, yes, this did form a bullish bearish bullish pattern, but I'm not so afraid to allow price to come back a little deeper. You know, we still have to allow the algorithm space to do what it could do. So, for example, it could still come back to this area. Now, once again, I'm looking for continuation signs. So we see a shoulder, head, shoulder and we get a bullish, bearish, bullish pattern. Okay, this gives me confidence because now we're forming new levels of demand that I see as protection, okay? So as we start to form order blocks in the direction that we're trading, we're using these as new protection levels to potentially trail stops or even set alerts under to you know get alerted if price is breaching a previous level of demand, but we don't care what price is doing above it, okay? Because we have to allow price room to fluctuate. Now, just like I said before, once we break past bearish candles, we are forming another order block. So as you guys can see, um, this area here is another order block that formed on a higher time frame, um, most likely this area as well as this area here. So both of those are representing demand for us now. Once again, I'm waiting for a quasi, so left head, right shoulder. We form several bullish order blocks, one right here as well as one right here and then we see another continuation. Now, once again, once this forms in the direction that I wanna trade and I see it be retested and respected, I am now seeing this as a level of security for my trade, 
Okay, so now we're building several levels of security from our initial entry down here. Now, once again, we break past this level so we can mark this as a order block. <clears throat> and then anything that's fluctuating within here, I'm not worried about it, okay? I'm not worried about this. Now, looking at this impulse leg that we created, I'll be looking for the chance of price coming back to fill in this missing price here. As you can see, we didn't really do that. We just kind of uh, ranged around, etc. But we started to form a lot of wicks to the bottom side of the price. And this was actually a larger quasi pattern. So we had a left head and a right shoulder here. We had exhaustion on the head as well as the right shoulder. And that kind of projected us up to a new high. So once again, guys, this is overall how the market is truly flowing. We had two levels of demand here. Once again, bullish order block on this time frame and a larger bullish order block on a higher time frame. From that point, we continue higher. We form a bullish bearish bullish pattern, and this is another level of demand for us. We continue pushing up bullish bearish bullish pattern, another level of demand. And we push up to this high, we consolidate, right? We come back, we form a quasi. So we form a left head, right shoulder. We form a new bullish order block here. And we form two other bullish order blocks here. Now, once again, we would have had this area highlighted as well as a order block pattern on a higher time frame. All right, and then these two order blocks as well would be seen as demand. Now, what happened when price invalidated here? This is letting us know that we just broke past two bullish order blocks. And then what happened when price did this? It also let us know that we invalidated a higher time frame order block as well as a third order block on this time frame. So this is a way that you can maximize your trading. And what I mean by that is Instead of just simply taking a one to three risk to reward trade, let's say on the closure of that bullish engulfing variation, you put your stop loss under for about a 4.5 um, pip stop loss, and then you're targeting a one to three here. Instead of just automatically closing your trade out at that one to three, what you can do is manage this trade. And until you see price action starting to break past several order blocks in a row, breaking past quasis, et cetera, you can hold your trade for extended targets, okay? So as you can see, these were very clean pushes even on the H1 time frame. What you'll start to notice a lot of the time is that the impulses on the lower time frames are clear once you truly understand how order blocks build on multiple time frames. And that's what we're doing here. We're using what I call like advanced order blocks or x-ray vision. Uh, you know, this is how I word it when I teach my students in the mentorship. Now we see a steeper retracement here, and it looks like it comes back to fill in majority of the missing price in this area, as well as retest this order block, right? But the thing is, yes, you could have correlated this on a higher time frame, but literally just by managing only on the one minute, we were able to extend this trade from a one to three all the way up to a one to 15.49 risk to reward. That simple, without any more work as far as, you know, seeing how far this is gonna come back against us, et cetera. So this is a simple way for you to manage your trades. Now, here's another simple area in price action um, that should allow you to have confidence in your entry once you actually take a position. So let's just say that, you know, we've seen price break upwards, retest, and we got in on, you know, some engulfing. So let's say that this engulfing we took a buy on, right? We put our stop loss under the order block here and we're targeting, let's say a one to three. Now I see all the time people get scared when they see price consolidating or forming a lot of bearish candles, but you want to change your mindset towards bearish candles. If you're buying and you start to see bearish uh, candles being printed, it's actually the best thing you can see, okay? Now stick with me here. If you're in a buy trade, bearish candles are going to basically become your protection. And what I mean by this is the quicker you form bearish candles and then form a continuation bullish candle, 
is the quicker that you complete the algorithm and you form a new level of demand. Now, what do I mean by complete the algorithm? Well, if we formed a bullish order block that we took the trade on, or I'm sorry, it was this one actually, <laughs> we took the trade on this bullish order block here, but we printed a new one here that impulse price to a new high over this high here, we know that price needs to come back and retest this order block. So why would I want price to continue pushing away from this area when I know for a fact that the algorithm is gonna wanna come back and retest this area? The best thing for myself and for my psychology is for price to do it immediately so that I'm already safe, okay? So once price crashes down, I'm content. I'm happy with my entry, understanding this is part of the algorithm. Price then closes a long wick to the bottom and then explodes higher. Once price closes past this bearish candle here, we form another bullish order block, which is giving our entry point protection. So now I'm already break even on this trade. There's no need for price to come back down here. All order blocks are retested in this Lego structure. Okay, so make sure you guys rewatch this part because this is definitely keys to how I trade um, and how I'm able to manage my trades with minimal drawdown, also minimal risk. Because if you can go break even within 10 minutes of your trade, that's amazing, you know? So moving forward now, we have a bullish bearish bullish pattern. So this forms another order block for us. We crash into it, another bullish bearish bullish pattern forms. And once again, I'm not afraid of these bearish candles and I'm not looking at this bearish candle as a bearish engulfing because of the fact that I understand bearish candles going against my direction are simply retracements. And I want to see a continuation come after them. Okay. Now, once again, bullish, bearish, bullish, we get two bearish candles. So we get a bearish, bullish, bearish pattern, and it looks like a bearish engulfing. Once again, I'm not going to be scared out of my trade just because I see a long wick to the top. We have to understand how liquidity works. Most retail traders are trading off of emotions, off of fear, off of greed, off of FOMO. So what's happening is that every time they see these bearish candles close with the long wick to the top side, they're rushing into sell positions because they feel like they missed out on catching this bullish rise. So now they're taking sales at all of these points, getting pissed off because they want to catch the transition to the seller's market. But we all know what happens in those situations. We end up coming out a loser, potentially blowing accounts, etc. Instead of just dropping the ego and saying, okay, cool, the market did take off. Is it worth the risk for me to get in on the continuation of that trend? Or should I just wait until we make it to a higher time frame level at which we could see a actual reversal? You know, so overall, once again, all these wicks are liquidity that are targets for that bullish structure. Hopefully this video helped you out by understanding how to maintain trades using order blocks and a couple other tips that I threw in there.